Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. In this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step method of making an interactive presentation showing the assembly of a filing cabinet using a tool called Cadascio and SolidWorks assembly. Now, Cadascio can be used to create product demo in a completely 3D interactive environment using clean animations. You can use this to show the assembly process of your products, removing the need of paper instruction manual. These instructions can be exported as a video file and you can also share it as a URL and viewers can watch it using any device. In fact, I've created a demo for you that you can watch using the link shared in the description. So with that, let's get started. So after creating the free Kadashio account, simply log in with your account credentials and you'll be taken to this projects area. Now, initially this will be completely blank just like that. And we need to start with the Kadashio plugin for your 3D CAD software. Now I'm using SolidWorks to explain everything here. So I'll be starting with the small SolidWorks plugin that will let you add projects to this browser here. Now to do that, I'll simply go to this resources tab here and here we have all the plugins for every 3D CAD software and currently the plugins for SolidWorks, Inventor, Fusion, Solid Edge and Onshape is available and of course as you can see more plugins are in the work and they'll be available soon. So we'll start with SolidWorks and here simply click on this image click here to download and that's going to download this small solidworks plugin now make sure that solidworks software is not running before installing this plugin so it should be closed and then click here to install it so during the installation process you will see this screen and that's where you need to add your email id and password so once you have added these two things just click on next and install and that's going to install your Kadashio plugin and click on finish and now we are ready to start solidworks so i'm going to launch solidworks so here we have it now i'll simply click on new start with part modeling and here we have brand new Kadashio command manager with this tool. Now, if you don't see it, you can simply right click anywhere on the command manager, go to tabs and from this list, select Kadashio. This should be checked. All right. Now we'll start with our assembly. So here I've got this assembly of this file cabinet and here I'll start with this full assembly file. You can also download this entire assembly from the link in description. So I'll double click this full assembly and that's going to launch it inside SolidWorks. And I'll also close the blank drawing. So let's just close it. And now we can directly upload it on Kadashio servers. Now to upload this, simply click here, Kadashio, and that's going to show you this prompt. Now, if you are logged in, it's going to show your email ID and it will directly upload it to your account. You don't need to do anything other than that. Now here, I'm just going to give it a name. So let's call it file cabinet. All right, if you want to add a description, you can add it here. And also you can select a destination where you want to add it either in the project section or toolbox. I want to add it in projects. So I'll select that and click on create. And it is uploaded. Now we have this message. Do you want to open it in browser? Well, yes. And it's going to open it in browser. And here we are. So we've got two extra tabs open here. So I'll close it so that we have only one single tab. And now let's see what we have here. So this is the default view of this file cabinet and you can just move it around simply by using your middle mouse wheel. So just press your middle mouse wheel to just move it around. You can also use right click to pan your part around in this drawing area. And you can just simply rotate your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now, the first thing here is the visual style option, and you can actually change the visual style as well as the style of background using all of these options. So here we have the background style single is selected that single solid color background. You can change it to radial and then you can change the color for this. So maybe I'll just go to this color option and make it red. You can also change the influence of this color. So that's at 45. You can just increase or decrease this value to change the influence of that color. If you don't want it, you can change it back to single color and also you can choose a single solid color background. I don't want this, so I'll leave it with the defaults. Then we have the rendering style. Right now it's matte. You can change that to flat, 
glossy, metallic or anything from this list. I like this tune style, so I'll select that. And here we have edges which are off. So you can just select on and the edges will show up. You can also change the edge thickness and you can activate or deactivate the silhouette effect. I'll keep it off. All right, so these are the visual styles. Now we have our solid model here, this complete assembly. I'll simply orbit my drawing slightly and move it where it looks perfectly normal. And we have everything visible here. And now here I'll create the first snapshot. Now snapshots are the backbone of creating animations in Kadashio. So I'll simply click here to create our very first snapshot and click on create. Now, if you want to give it a name, you can give it a name, description, but here I'll leave the default values and click on create. Now, our first snapshot or the first step is created. Now, if you move your drawing around, if you make changes and then save it again, it will save it as a new step. For example, in this case, I'll now select this top plane and I'll just move it up. And if I now click on this save snapshot, it's going to save it as a step. But before I do that, maybe let's press Ctrl Z and instead of this panel, let's select these screws. So I'll just select this screw. And now, as you can see, we have several screws in our drawing. So if you want to select all of these screws, simply press the slash key and that's going to select all the screws. Now you can use these move triads to move it up, down or wherever you like. But as you can see, we have a problem here. It's going to select all the screws and it simply doesn't make any sense. We just want to select the screws here on the top. So I'm not going to use this method and instead I'll just press Ctrl Z a couple of times to get back to the original location. And now I'll select these screws again one by one. So I'll select this screw. Now Ctrl select all the other screws and it's going to select it all. Now click the triad here and that's going to move it up. It looks like I missed this one, so I'll select it separately and I'll move it up again. Now, if you want to move it along a plane, you can select this plane, this plane, or you can also select here to just move it freely. So here it will just move it freely. It will move along this plane, along this plane or this bottom plane. So you can just select the plane wherever you want to just move it. I'll just move it up like that and click outside. Now we can once again save it as a step. So let's click on save as a step and create. Now I'll select the next panel and I'll repeat the process. Now in this case, this one is move triad, but if you let's say want to rotate this one, you can also change it to rotate simply by pressing alt key. Now using all of these circles, you can rotate it in different direction. For example, here you can rotate it in this direction, this one and this one, and you can also rotate this along the view direction using this. So we of course don't want to rotate it. So I'll press Alt key and actually I'll press Ctrl Z a couple of times so that we are back to this. And now I'll just move it slightly upwards like this. All right. And once again, we'll save it as a step. So let's go to create step and create. Now in a similar way, I'll disassemble most of these components one by one. So here I'll just move it to the back panel and I'll select all of these screws here using the triad, move it out. Now we can save it as a step. But before we do that, let's press Ctrl Z and save this one as a step. Now I'll select all of these screws here and I'll move it back. Save it as a step. Select, move it back, another step. Now, here is a problem. This screw should not be here. It should have moved exactly along this line. But since we changed its plane, it's now no longer aligned with that. So we just need to fix it. Now to fix this, we can go back to this step where this screw was moved and we can then change its location. So let's go to this step manager and here locate this step. And that happens to be step two. So I'll click on open, confirm, and it looks like we missed our last step, we did not save it, but that's totally fine. I'll simply click on confirm. It will take us to that step. And now we can select it and move it. So the first thing is this. I'm going to move to this plane and I'll just move it like that. And here from this direction, while well, we can see it, now it's exactly on top of this. And that's the proper location. So with that, we are now satisfied with this. So I'll save this step. Now I'll not only save this step, but I'll also transfer the same properties on the next set of steps. So 
If you just want to save the location of this screw only for this step, step two, then select this option. And if you want to save the same location, the changed one for all the next set of steps, then select this next option, update step and propagate. And that's what I'm going to select. Now let's review all the steps. So I'll go back to this step one. That's our first step. Now click on next and next and next and next again. And finally, next again here. So these are all the steps. Now we'll go back to the bottom view. So here we have the bottom view. Now here I'll save it again as one more step. So I'll just move it up slightly like that. Save it. Move it out. Select the panel and move it out. Now in a similar way, I will move all the other panels out. So now we have all of these steps created. It's time to hide everything that is not necessary. But before we do that, let's label them all. So here, as you can see, we have all of these panels and the screws and you can see them clearly. And most of these are actually the same set of objects. So labeling is an important step and this will help you identify the components. And you can use these labels to assemble these components quite easily. Now the labeling tools are here in the toolbox. So go to toolbox and right here we have all the labeling tools. Now all these few options up to label are the default options and then we have these two tags that we created. So you can create your own custom label as well. We'll see the steps of creating custom label as well in a moment but first let's start with this item number tag. Now here I'll start with this screw. So I'll just select this screw and I'll add the item number tag here and let's just call it one item number one. All right, and I'll click OK. So we've got the screw number one. Now I'll also change its size so you can select it. And using these grips, you can actually move it around. You can change its size and even shape like so. Now, if you want to keep this shape for all the other tags, then you can save it as well. So let's first select it. And now here we have the toolbox option. Go to that and click on plus and now give it a name. So I'll call it sample tag. All right. And in the default toolbox, click on save. And that sample tag is saved. So from the next time onwards, all you need to do is just go to this toolbox, select the sample tag and add it wherever you like. For example, we've added one for a screw. So I'll add one for panel. So here's the panel. I'll select this and I'll add the number two here for this. Click OK and we are done. Now let's add text annotations as well with this. So for the text annotations, I'll go to toolbox. And here I'll select text and I'll add it here. So this is cabinet screw. All right. And this one is cabinet panel. And we are done. So click OK. Now, if you want to change the text size, well, you can just move it around and you can also change its formatting. So simply double click, select the text and you can change the formatting like font size, bold, italics and all these other things from this list here. I think the default one is just about fine. So I'll leave it and also I'll just select it and just move it like so. And here also I'll just ensure that it is fit in just one single line so that it just fits properly like that. OK, so we are done. Now let's save it as a new step. So now everything is labeled and we know what these things are. It's time to hide all of these things that we don't need. So I'll simply orbit my drawing like so. And not only that, after orbiting, I'll also hide all of these extra things that we don't need. So for hiding, all you need to do is select the components that you want to hide and then type the H key. So H and that's going to hide it. I'll also select this and control select this one and then go to this selection tool. And from here, you can click on this visibility and hide selection and that's going to hide it too. So now we'll also hide all the other components that we've already seen, like all these screws and panels. So I'll just select them. Type the H key to hide it. Similarly for the screws and I'll save it as a step. Now here in the drawer, we have the knobs and all these things. So let's explode it. And once again, I'm going to use the same method we've used so far. So now we have all of these components exploded. Let's talk about one more thing here, and that's the step lines. So using these step lines, you can actually show the way components can be exploded or assembled. Now, in this case, I've got this knob here and this knob essentially 
will move out from this point so in order to show this thing using step line i'll just select this knob and i'll move it back to its place so this should be right about here all right now that we have this thing here i'll maybe save it as a new view before i show it so i'll just select it and i'll slightly move it back all right and let's now save it as a step all right and now i'll go to toolbox and here i'll use a line 3d tool but before i do that i'll just select this component then go to toolbox and select line 3d now i'll click here just on this bar and click ok and if you now move it out it will move out with this step line now basically this line is showing the direction of motion of this component with respect to this now here we are so you can also modify this so select the step line and if you want to change it for example if you want to change the color maybe let's make it black and also the thickness then you can do it from here so the scale is five let's just make it two and i'll just make it exactly two so you can just type two here all right so that's our step line now in a similar way you can add step lines for all of these screws and several other components if you want to but i don't want to this is just an example so i'll just save this step again now here if you want to once again add the labels you can go to toolbox and add a tag and text or you can use the combination of both which is the label here so maybe i'll use label this time but before i use it i'll orbit my drawing slightly and i'll just select this screw right here and i'll move it back now here also once again you can use the explode lines just to show the way this should move with respect to the hole but i'll leave it that way and i'll just save it and I'll go to toolbox, select label, and I'll add the label only for that screw. So I'll select and here. Now, as you'll notice, this will automatically pick the name of this component, which happens to be panel handle screw number six. Now this will automatically pick the part name and it will display it here. And if you want to change it, you can actually exit out of this and then you can just double click, delete it all, and then change its name completely. In this case, I don't want to. So I'll simply make this small tweak and here we are. All right, now let's save it once again as a step. Now it's time to again hide the components that we don't need. And in a similar way, we'll explode this hinge assembly. And here it is. Once again, I'll hide it. And finally, we'll create the steps for the drawer channel. And here we are. Once again, I'll just hide all of these channels and I'll hide this one from this direction too because it's the exact same thing and the way it will disassemble will be exactly like the one we did previously. And here we are. So this is how this entire assembly is disassembled and you can actually use the reverse method to show the way it is assembled. So you can start with the exploded assembly and bring all the components one by one together to show the way this assembly can be built from ground up. Now we have also moved around this assembly using simple mouse navigation, but there are ready-made tools that will help you navigate quite efficiently. For example, here you can just go to these hotspots on the view cube to go to the respective view. For example, you can go to top, you can click here to go to that view, left, this view, and so on. So simply click the hotspot, it will take you there. If you want to save any of these views as a default view, then you can do that too. For example, let's say we want to save this view as one of our custom views. Then we can go to camera and right here we can create a view. So go to this camera option, that's orientations and just bring it here and go to custom. Now give it a name. So I'll call it sample and draw and click on this camera icon. And that's going to save it. So we've got the sample draw here. Now, if you go to default and just go back to any other view, for example, front, back, right, bottom. And then let's say if you now want to go back to that view, you can go to custom, select sample draw. It will take you there. And also we have the views like isometric, normal to where you can just select a plane and it will make your view normal to that plane. So these are some of the options that you can select to change your views automatically using some predefined options. So now that we have everything done, let's save this last step here and let's follow through all the steps one by one. So here all the steps are listed. You can just go to this and review all the steps in this list. If you want to just navigate through these steps, you can click on these toggles to just go back to all the steps one by one like so. So here 
is how it should assemble. Now making these animations is just half the work done and sharing is as easy as making this animation. Now for sharing all you need to do is just go to this option here called tools and right here we have options of sharing the snapshots. So you can just grab the snapshot of all these steps and you can just add these snapshots in your product catalog for making a DIY assembly catalog and you can also export it as PDF if you want to. You can export it as a video file or you can simply export it in a web format where you can just export the URL or a QR code which will basically take you to this animation. Now let me show you how that works. So I'll simply go to this publish online option and right here we have all the publishing options. So here I'll start with auto start being off. I don't want it to start automatically though if you want to you can just select on here and you can add information like width and height of the embed window. Now once you're done making all these changes, all you need to do is click on publish. Now, if you want to protect this animation with password, you can just add it here. Well, we're not gonna do that, so simply I'll click on publish. And here we are, it is now published. Now we have the public URL, the embed code, and this QR code, which will basically take you to the URL where you can see it on your mobile device. Now here, I'll simply copy this URL, the public URL, and I'll show you how it works. So I'll go to the incognito mode, and here I'll copy and paste this. And here it is. Simply click play and that's going to load it. Now as this is open here in the browser, it retains all the functionalities, steps and everything. And it's very interactive as well. So just like the main Kadashio window here, you can just move it around. Or if you want to see all the steps, then simply go to this list and explore the steps. So you can just select any specific step, it will take you there. Or if you want to just navigate through all the steps from start, simply start with this and click on play. And that's going to just take you to the series of steps one by one. If you want to go to the last step, that's here. If you want to go to the first step, that's here. Now this interactive method will help users understand the assembly process very easily as everything is in 3D and they can actually see the mating components quite easily in this 3D animation. The shared URL can be accessed from any device, either PC, laptop, tab or a mobile device and it's absolutely free. Now here you can also add interactive elements in the video. For example, you can add links and pop-ups to make it even more engaging. And needless to say, simply by not printing the instruction manuals, you are saving the environment as well. So everything is online and it is presented in a modern and interactive way and quite easy for users to understand this. So I'll now close it and we are back to this. Now, if for some reason you don't want it shared online, you can also unpublish it whenever you like. In this case, I don't want to unpublish it. And that's our filing cabinet presentation. Now there is one final thing that I want to add here. What if at a later stage you decided to update your model or your drawing and in that case it's not required to update all the steps here in Kadashio. So if you happen to update your model at a later stage all the updates are propagated to Kadashio server seamlessly with one single click. Now let me show you an example. So here I have this filing cabinet and as you can see we've got all of these steps. Now I want to make a simple change. Here we have these panels. The height of panel is quite right here. I mean of course it's going to bump here into this panel but if you look at it here well the height is not suitable for this one. So we just need to increase the height here so that it bumps into this panel. Now for that we need to modify the actual model and that's gonna happen in SOLIDWORKS. So let's do that. So I'll open SOLIDWORKS and here we have this panel and that's the one which I need to modify. So I'll select it and open this part. Now here's the part. The part is open. All I need is a bit of extra length. So I'll go to this sketch and I'll add the length here. So that's 256. I'm gonna make it 266. All right. Exit this sketch and close it. Save the changes. And I'll also update the assembly. All right. And as you can see, it is updated here. So we just need to update this one too. So I'll select it and I'll open this one, the right panel as well, and I'll make the similar change. All right. And the changes are added here in the assembly level. But what about sending it over to Kadashio? Well, it's just a one step process. Simply click on this Kadashio option again. 
And now here we have an option of selecting a new assembly or update the existing one. I want to update this. So select update, select the project, which is file cabinet, and that's the version number. It's the second revision, click update. Now, if you want to add notes, that's here. You can add it, but I don't want to, so I'll just leave it. And we are done. Let's open it in a browser again. And here we are. So everything is updated. Simply click yes. And here we are. The updates are also propagated here. And all the steps are retained as they are. So no change whatsoever. And you don't need to repeat everything again. So simply you can follow through all the steps quite easily. And the changes are also retained.